Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Trek Yards. And now, he is Commander Cockings. That's what Pips say. I am! Or he might be. He might be an imposter. We're not quite sure. But that's what do you think of episode five? Uh, I enjoyed it. It wasn't as... Like, people have been building up to be such an amazing episode, and it was. I mean, it was cool to have a return of a, a legacy person and uh, some really good back and forth and born identity happening and a whole bunch of stuff going on. I expected more to happen. I loved seeing the brand new ship, the Intrepid. That was amazing. Um, clearly designed after one of Bill's other works, but we'll talk about that in a separate episode. Um, so just kudos to Bill for getting those designs out there. So there's some great ship shots for sure in there and a really, really good twist. A few twists in this episode. Uh, I didn't expect to see the person uh, like roll there in return, honestly. I've seen the person like this should be a spoiler free. Um, it's it's spoilers, by the way. Um, didn't expect her to return. I never liked the character, ever. And when she returned, I was like, oh, but, like, now I remember why I don't like her. But then, her little heart-to-heart -heart with Picard, uh, from then on, they really did a good job with that character because I actually cared about what happened. And you look forward um, to seeing so more of her. No, not really. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I, th the way that that happened and the sacrifice, I think, was very impactful and heartfelt. And I, I, kudos to that. And that was a fantastic job. Again, anytime you can kind of turn me on a character, I'm impressed. And yeah, for the half this episode, I was like, oh, shit, back. That was great. Uh, infiltration of Starfleet is interesting. Uh, there's a lot to cover there. And I'm surprised it's so much because even Shaw's like four people on one ship. So obviously it's very entrenched and you got that big display of a whole bunch of information at the end uh, to the fact, to the point where even Roe was, you know, a uh, worst handler. So I thought it was an interesting episode. A lot of good twists, like I said, tying everything together. We're still not moving as fast as I'd like. I'd like everybody together in the same room soon because we're more than halfway now. Um, so I'll stop talking now and now let's hear what you have to say about it. Uh, I think with a reasonable margin, it was the best episode of the season. It's the first episode out of the five where almost every single moment has had textual, universal, canon addition. There isn't really throwaway moments. Every single scene with Rowan Picard is meaningful and adds something and, and redevelops. And it is, you know, as if they knew they had a time limit of character moments of the character. Because you don't blow up. And so they use every minute. Riker's is used infrequently, but powerful every time. Shaw is used infrequently, but he stands out for the moment he is. Crusher's great. Uh, Jack is is impressive, physically, and his acting was very good. And and that obviously deepens. You know, it takes you from a sort of mystery to a well, damn mystery, which it really needed to kind of jump that forward. Uh, the intrepid itself, you know, it's good. We didn't just have a full up firefight. Kind of leaves there more room for later. You know, building into that, which is nice. And the fact that the the the, the scope of the problem went from being tiny to being as big as brain bugs in season one of TNG, but without being brain bugs from CNG. So it, it, everything about it added way more than many of the last ones. We haven't got scenes where just the village is cackling or firing and there's bad space battle, which doesn't really quite work. Like there's Everything has meat, which was nice. And certainly Picard was on form. Patrick sort of, you know, uh, you almost had a slight, tiny inclination that he might at one point said, you know, I thought of you as a daughter or a potential girlfriend. He could have played it either way with how he kind of went extra emotional. You know, he could have he could have gone either way with that in those scenes. Although, boy, she just looked like Admiral Kane to me because Ro Laren was young with different hairstyles, I felt like. And that I just kept seeing Admiral Kane from BSG. Same looking age. It's good if it's been sort of 20 years, she looked the same. Same sort of hair. No, you'd say that. Black. I mean, she, looks, she feels more like Kane because how, how do you reinterpret a character that you played when you were like... 29 who is meant to be young and like she didn't she was very much Kane but still Rowian. Well, let's just talk about the Worf and Raffi stuff get that out of the way um it didn't actually slam on the brakes for me in this one um because this, this was a nice transition between the scenes Philip Gaming who's who we know is starred in this show or not starred but was a part of it uh messaged me last night saying he was in that fight scene he's one of the Vulcans that gets killed by Worf so he get killed by Worf we're going to have him on the show at some point to talk about being on the set. But that was, again, interesting. As, as, and I love that they address everything. Like, Terry and the writers know what's going on. Because as soon as I saw a Vulcan, I'm like, well, it's not logical to be a criminal. They address that. <laughs> um, to have a criminal organization is, in fact, logical. 
for the society and whatever. So I just thought it was um, a cyborg sort of person who just moved past logic. First, I didn't even think I was like, oh, that's cool. But the fact they even went further makes it more fun if they work within the confines of logic because then you definitely. I like the actor. I've seen him in plenty of things. Um, it was, I, I, I was like, oh, that voice. Oh, it's that guy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the Warf Raffi stuff is all right. I'm glad it, it culminated with him contacting um, Picard and Riker, but um, her her stabbing him, I'm like, this is a setup, obviously. And I thought about him meditating, going, he was setting up for this. Like, he knew something like this was going to happen. Um, so that that's a good reveal, but yeah. It's a, it's a funny old thing, because it, it, once you start to get into the meat of that storyline, you realize how much padding there was that they could have stripped out, right? Yeah. It's probably only about two episodes worth, maybe three of stuff. They've moved into five. Now we're integrating them, it'll move forward. Um, and certainly I was like, really back on the street sets. Yeah, I was disappointed by that. Well. Um, yeah, again, you can see the budget limitation, especially as those scenes are relatively short. So they could probably film the entire Raffi Wharf plot on the streets. What, in two weeks? A week and a half? And that's fine. It's efficient, but you know you see that that is like a budget thing. Same with the bar, which they don't even try and address. Back in the bar, I guess it was still on from the last mission, but they would certainly have. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Whatever, but it's like, you know, I was kind of thinking that would be a different set, but whatever. There's cool stuff to come. We know that. That's fine. Um, but the Wolf and Raffi stuff, Wolf's great. I like the fact that we and we were calling it. I was calling it last week. We'll get a brilliant patch moment. Because she's clearly got a mobile emitter on from the start of that scene. I clocked it straight away. I kind of thought he might have as well, so I was waiting for the double twist. But I liked how that was used. Uh, and now it means I can officially use mobile emitters in Trek shorts now, because they exist, I suppose, which is quite a big thing to do. I'm sure they just reused the Confederation prop, which would not be what it would look like, but whatever, saving budget. But I clocked that, I was thinking it'd be a bit more of a cool moment of, like, some sort of hollow trick big thing. Um, but you know you've got to have it on this in the scene to work. But if you clock it, it kind of takes this tension from the scene. And Wolf is obviously going to live, so it's wonderful to watch a scene where there's no tension of any kind, but you're being played for full tension. If you're if you're careful enough to look for the for the clues, right? I love that it was also addressed that you know you decapitated Sneed, he's dead. I mean, need information from him, dumbass. That was interesting. <laughs> yep, no, they they thought it through a little bit. Uh, it was interesting that uh, Ro was in fact his handler, though. Um, yes, that was, and it also makes more sense that she said, "Don't go to Daystrom because they couldn't have got through. They had to get this chain of events, which makes a lot more sense. Why pausing on it? There's, there's a, there's a, you know, and, and if Snee was friends with the other guy that we know, then there are other ways of getting information versus just going there and and stabbing people." But it, yeah, it was a, uh, and you know, two other things. The the you know controlled by a strong AI, and they cut to Law's lab. <laughs> it's like, well, that's Law being the AI construct. That's a I buy that mostly. <laughs> mostly, yeah, risky, but hey, there you go. Um, and you know these positrons are very advanced. I don't like whenever they say this thing's impe impenetrable. Like except when they do. But a Sung Android being the control interface for the station. Okay, yeah, okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty smart. That was my inference there. Which then double twists, because then as soon as... If he's then reassembled, or if they have to... I don't know if how he would do that, if he stays assembled and goes into a chamber and he works on it as, as the AI, but it, like, redefines him as... Well, he's not the villain, but we as the audience thought, oh my god, law! I was like, yeah, he was just asked to be the AI helper. But it explains why we didn't go to Daystrom yet. Because I... Every, for the last three episodes, I said, you're going to Daystrom, right? Nope. Nope. Because they can't. Okay, good. And we got to see it, and I recognise all the shapes. <laughs> all the shapes, Stuart. I know that station well from its configured pieces. Yes, Jupiter Station and such. Well, let's talk about uh, the role reveal then. Um, I was surprised to see her back. So you didn't know. And, it wasn't uh, spoiled for you then. And it was not spoiled Good, for me. Good, me either. Because if it had been, the effect would not have worked in the same way. Um, I found it interesting that she handed him her earring, which I assume she took off right before boarding the ship. Because it's something that she would have wore, as he as he kind of pointed out. You know, you you made the point of, you know, and it's something she'd always have on her, which is a perfect place to hide her and in, intel, because uh, she can just quickly use it or whatever. Um, it's also a bad idea for an intelligence officer to have something on her that has all of her information. But I, I think I think she was played very well, and it was great to see her back. And yeah, I, 
absolutely had the vibe that she was in on it until she wasn't. And that was fantastic as well. Um, the, the only thing in the bar there where he turns off the safety protocols, which I liked because oh, was, it, he, was into, it him or her? I thought she did. That was him. I mean, when he bent down under the bar, he hit it. Oh, okay. I glasses. thought she turned off as she walked Because she in. needed to grab the, the fake. Right, okay. Weapon. That makes more sense. I was slightly confused as to why she would do it to shoot with the real phaser. Okay, that makes more sense. She did make a point of saying the walls are thin. Let's turn on some music, which then later when they're actually talking about what's actually going on, there's no music playing. I wish it would have been like background music to imply that there was music just in case somebody was kind of trying to listen in. Small thing, but uh, oh, very well played. The whole you disappointed me, you let me down. And no, I really didn't. Um, you, you would think that her coming back, though, getting court-martialed and then re-entering Starfleet, you think that would be a big deal to kind of be broadcast? You hear so-and-so's back or, you know, the, that kind of, you know, rumor mill would be going around. Because um, she got up to Commander, so that was quite a while ago. Well, um, Starfleet intelligence is by, you know, I'm sure deeper levels of, let's not tell people. You know, I thought that was very well constructed, uh, everything about that story, so... Uh, kudos that was amazing yeah um, yeah and it was such that you apart from the you know f face slam into glass wait what moments because you know bringing someone like that back who is a very un unfinalized story means they can do lots more or not you know i've already had some worthwhile legacies back unlike you know where's the crusher to be a traveler which doesn't really add that much this it added a ton because not only did it deepen the stakes, proved you can kill somebody, a real like a real character. You know, killing Rios is like, okay, he killed Rios. But killing someone from TNG is like, ooh, okay. Yeah, it, to explain why she got back in is certainly they had to then explain it. It would be nice with an A flashback. So you don't need that. But the, there's so much time and story there to gloss over in a way that you are absolutely as an audience left thinking, it yeah, will shoot the changeling or she's a this or that. They play it so ambiguous which is obviously on purpose, and, and then you learn that she's fully in on it, therefore she knows she's testing Picard. So it makes sense on, on re just instant retrospect, okay, there's a game being played, and Picard's too taken up by the emotions to see it, and she has minutes to, to work it out, etc. And so, yeah, it, it, it... And, you know, of all people you can trust, the person that held a grudge on me for 30 years because I did the right thing in the wrong way and the wrong way and the right thing, of course I can trust him. And then the holodeck thing, yeah, they, they it sort of is a good payoff, having, well, it won't be heard here. Why not? <laughs> I mean, they don't really need any detail with that. But the safeties are like, uh, yeah, Hollow Phaser was was certainly fun. And then, yeah, they went, and then she starts calling John Luke. All the all the trust layers break down because once you realise of why, they can still be the same person. Yeah, it was deep, and you know, good for getting the actress as much screen time as possible. I mean, she certainly owned the time. And I certainly didn't expect her to, to die. I did also note that it's subtle, but the way that happened, the bomb didn't go off. Just the shuttle hit the nacelle. The nacelle. If the bomb had gone off, it would have blown up a lot more of the ship, which would have killed civilians, probably. So she actively chose to skip the bomb detonation, destroy the shuttle first, to so destroy the bomb, so it wouldn't go off. So it would just cripple the ship, which was a genius strategy by itself. You know, why hit anything else? So I thought that was very... Uh, you know, I mean, it's, in theory, her... I'm oh, sorry, her ship. Well, I mean, it could be her ship, but it's her. You know, she knows these people, and yes, there's four changelings, but there might be 400 people. It's good. Well thought out. Fuck, I know. Yeah, the, the whole the whole bomb sequence was interesting. Yeah, the, the dampening feel. They can't beam her off. They can't do this. They can't do that. They covered like all their bases in that regard. Although they did say she could have returned to the Titan. She was still in full control. Yeah, she had to get closer so they could beam her off, yeah. But yeah. the fact is, if she got close, the bomb would have done damage to Titan. So she's she went tactical with it versus save her own life. That's why it's even more poignant. It wasn't a last minute decision. It was a well, I've got a minute twenty. I guess I'll make the best tactical decision. Goodbye. That was it's even smarter because she's you know intelligent. She has that sort of strategic brain. Shaw too was back to his usual dickish self a little bit too much at the beginning, in my opinion. It's like I already called them boys. You know, get your. I love if I did say get your story straight, all of you. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> So it's kind of a, that line again of too much of a dick. Then, you know, he was riding that river for a game. And then at the end, it's like, oh, yeah, well, security, grab this. And Riker's like, seriously? Um, and then to see the, the, the explosions, look for yourself. So now I think Shaw is fully, fully, fully on their side. 
I mean, from an acting point of view, there was a really strong difference in all of the subtext subtlety of the guy's performance, of Todd's performance. In the first episode, there was a genuine hardness behind the eyes. In this, there really wasn't. The words he was saying led to the official Starfleet business, but none of it he was relishing in. And he was actually giving them a lot more rope to, to I did not hang themselves, ev- everything he could. Uh, even the <laughs> recommissioning seven and it, that made me laugh. That I thought was a, that, that was funny. That, like that was yeah, because <laughs> that's all it is. It, it's such a small thing. Uh, but no, I thought he was very very good, and you really felt the development, which is hard to do for a brand new captain. It's already a high bar to to be at, and entirely feel like he's not necessarily sympathetic, but he now knows them personally. He's and whenever you fight a real situ- life or death for somebody, you bond with them. It's always going to happen. That just is. But he's still going to be the proper officer until the point of well who is the proper officer now at the end and now it's save crew save ship try and save everybody and now he's on i thought that was a very very nice integration um but we're now still now gonna have three sh- uh, three chefs in the kitchen though with a an admiral and two captains we'll see how that plays out although i guess no i guess Riker's gonna with wolf which makes sense to kind of split that up but i love how in the turbo with was bringing up all the, sh- the bad stuff they did it's kind of like causing the problem and then solving the problem so it's like <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, we yeah we save the universe, but how many times have we broken everything and damaged things? Because yeah, I mean, it, does a save the universe get you out of jail for everything, or is it kind of one for one? I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure on his record, you know, by not in- infecting Hugh, there's a big red mark on his record saying dis- disordination and and threatening the Federation, and you know that's a negative on his save the universe counter. <laughs> yeah. Too many fight. But uh, yeah. I guess the other thing we need to address is the Jack Crusher in the room. The, the Crusher. The- the Crusher identity, as it were, kind of the sleeper agent vibe again, where he kind of got activated and just kicked butt like for you know, just and aggressively so. And clearly, at the end of that scene, uh, based on the visuals, that this is clear Stranger Things crossover with, with Vecna because there is red tendrils, there is red stuff floating in the air, and uh, Vecna can control people. So, I guess he read, you know, he read Fuzz's his eyes, he came from the upside down, and he made him fight. I mean, you can't. How much more of a confirmed crossover can you get, Stuart? All the visuals line up. Yeah, well, it makes sense. I can't wait to see eleven. Maybe she'll show up in like episode nine. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering if he's infected by the changelings, or if he's in part changeling, or what's going on with that. It's very specific because Jack killing the crew is not what the changelings are after. So visioning that it does not necessarily equate. Was him in uniform as he was in the other, in the later, was that him foreseeing actively? Is there some sort of premonition ability that he's now been given? That's a question. A changing fighting and changeling, or is he more? Is he, is he, is he something else? Maybe he's an anti-changeling weapon even, because ki- you assume one changeling is, is too strong. And in fact, we saw him fight the other changeling and was much stronger physically. He literally beat him against a wall, and yet he can now manually fight four flawlessly to the point of kill. So he's he's insanely more powerful, so he can't... I don't think he's just a change in them. And the fact that he also... And I'm really glad they did this, and I'll, I'll call out on the live as well. He actually changed the weapon from stun to kill as a deliberate yes. plot point, because he's like, I'm going to kill them even easier than, I guess, stun did in the other scenes, because... Okay. So he's, 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 like I said, Jason Borning it. As, as if he's been trained to kill changelings. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's a Section 31 weapon. Or do, do, do detect changelings because Beverly asks him, "How did you know they're all changelings?" And he's like, "I didn't. I just killed everybody." <laughs> but he, but he might have in the moment, you know. So, but yeah, it was a very interesting scene. They, they played it very, very well, and uh, leads to even grander things. But I don't think it's a changeling from that doesn't doesn't connect for me anyway, which is interesting. That's better. So if it was a changeling, you'd be like, "Oh, okay." So where's the real one? Is he dead? Is he alive? Do those other scenes count with Picard. Well, it ties into what Bev says a bit. She says, you know, you used, you used to have nightmares that you didn't want to go to bed. It could be the same kind of nightmares. It could be this is something that's, in fact, uh, been part of him since he was born, you know? so. Well, that's certainly the implication. It means he can't just be a changeling, just replace. That's what, you know, they're, they're, they're funneling you away from certain concepts to ensure you there's something interesting here. Uh, was he genetically modified? Was he Romulan interference? Was he this? Was he that? Yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah, mm. and clearly it's uh, less but, about what he knows now, which our original idea with Vadic, you know, she's after what he knows, but it's more likely now what he is, his DNA, and not directly linked to Picard, because again they would have grabbed Picard in the first two episodes, 
but he, you know, genetic something that's doing something. And you had said, Stuart, all those genetic uh, fractal things in the credits. So definitely an augment of some kind. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I give them a lot of uh, praise for the way they're constructing this story and the way they're playing it out. They're like drip feeding us information, but he's still keeping us hooked. Um, and yet some of the reveals are instant almost. So it's, it's, it's a very nice mixture of both. And the, 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 the one that should be dragged out as long as possible is doing a good job in, in doing that. And it um, would have been obnoxious if at the end he did not tell Beverly, because that would have been drawn out. It felt like, remove the story forward. It makes sense. Next episode, start talking about it. Continue. That was right. I was very happy about that. Yeah. It, it, yeah, as if it was thought out from the start. It, boy, it has, makes a difference in narrative storytelling. Wow, what a difference. Oof. Well, that's all I can think of to talk about with this episode until we get into our deep dive later. But in the comment section down below, guys, let us know your thoughts on it. <clears throat> anything we addressed, anything we missed, we want to hear it about it. So put it down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video so you can, you know, help the channel out um, and help us grow. So also join us for the lives where we like to break these things down in much greater detail and you can input your two cents in real time and we get to talk about it as well so join us for those and we have a lot of stuff to talk about in this track because then we break down all the small things analyze discuss theorize work out where we're going and we have called a few things now a few things I mean, we say a lot of things so the diapers will call something but we have called some things already very happy about that so support us in our analysis breakdown theorization not just for picard but stranger worlds discovery lodex project all the shows we do all year round. It's for us we are weekly, daily, monthly. These are all ways. But any live super chat, it's any amount, say anything you want, we'll read it, have a discussion based on it. Super thanks, also on YouTube, on any video on any month or any year, any amount, that is incredible. Or you can PayPal, trackers at hotmail.com. It all goes for show costs, anything helps. And uh, buy shirts. Links down below. They actually look rather cool. Worth getting. That's right. So, until next time, guys, I assume he's still Commander Cockings. He sounded like him through the whole thing, so. Yeah. He's kind of furly. We're good. We're good. Until next episode. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>